Hello and welcome to part three of this 16 part mini series on healing CFS, fibro, sears, MCAS, and more with a trauma informed approach. I'm Jennifer Ellis Schutz and this is the Wellness Code Academy channel. If this video and this series resonates with you, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified so that you don't miss out on any of this incredible content. So as a quick review, some of the key points I've discussed to this point in the series include the following, how it's never just one factor that causes a person to get sucked into the vortex of chronic illness, but rather chronic disease is a multifactorial and multi-systemic condition created by the perfect storm of stressful life experiences and toxic stressors of all kinds. Second, how trauma of all kinds alters the way the nervous system interprets and responds to environmental inputs, thus serving as a primary driver of the development of chronic disease. Next, how without consistent implementation of nervous system self-regulation tools, even the most skillful of functional health approaches will likely fall short in paving the way for recovery. And then finally, how mindset, the circadian clock, and sleep are all intimately connected with the nervous system, immune system, and mitochondrial function, and are all at the top of the list of factors that serve to set chronic illness in motion when they are dysfunctional, and therefore must be prioritized when it comes to creating the foundation for healing and personal success. And now it's time to delve into the next most critical step in the wellness code approach, which is shutting off the chronic cell danger response switch and helping the body shift from defense to peace mode. In light of this, this video will cover the following main points. An introduction to cell danger response, the mitochondria cell danger response chronic disease connection, challenges with assessing and addressing cell danger response, and lastly, initial strategies for shutting off the CDR switch and helping the body to shift from defense to peace mode. This said, my original goal with this series was to keep all videos to 15 minutes or less, but this is a big topic, and to give it justice, this video does need to be a bit longer than that. So thank you in advance for your patience. The cell danger response model of chronic inflammation and a condition known as SEERS, which stands for Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, was introduced to the various health arenas most interested in chronic invisible illnesses, particularly the functional, holistic, and integrative spaces in 2013 by the brilliant Dr. Robert Navio. Dr. Navio is a genetics professor in medicine, pediatrics, and pathology, as well as co-director of the Mitochondrial and Metabolic Disease Center at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. This said, both my journey with chronic illness and now my vast experience in working with hundreds of clients over many years now have led me to believe that a big missing link, perhaps the missing link in solving the chronic disease puzzle and helping people to regain their energy and reclaim their lives is figuring out how to turn off the chronic cell danger response mode switch. It indeed has been a huge missing link for me. The cell danger response model provides us with a new understanding of chronic illness as having been created by a persistent inflammatory response to a stimulus that may no longer be present. And this changes the entire paradigm of how we identify and address complex chronic health conditions such as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, neurodegenerative diseases, mast cell syndromes, chronic Lyme and company, mental illness, autism spectrum disorders, autoimmunity, and more. In these scenarios, somehow the person's body has lost the ability or knowledge of how to turn off the process that triggered illness in the first place. Because of this, the entire system, so I'm talking the body, mind, and spirit, needs to be rebooted and rewired for wellness and personal success. And as a part of solving the chronic illness puzzle for both yourself and your clients, it's essential to have a solid understanding of the mechanisms behind chronic cell danger response and strategies for turning it off. It's also vital for you to educate your clients around this concept and help them understand that with a solid understanding of all the mechanisms involved and learning strategies for addressing them, 
we take full responsibility for our healing and grant ourselves a sense of agency. With agency comes the power of choice and making well-informed decisions. This builds a great sense of self-efficacy and self-empowerment, which are two essential elements in recovery from anything. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, upwards of 60% of adults and 30% of children and teens living in the United States alone are living with at least one chronic disease. And as sad as that statistic is, it doesn't include those living with undiagnosed, life-altering symptoms such as chronic fatigue, body aches and pains, low moods, digestive inflammation, and more. Their condition has not yet been labeled or named by a medical professional yet, but it's debilitating all the same. And according to a survey performed by the National Safety Council, 43% of Americans report feeling too tired at work to function well, and 97% report having at least one of nine major lifestyle risk factors going on for chronic daytime fatigue. If you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you or somebody you know is somewhere on the spectrum between being diagnosed with a chronic condition and living with chronic symptoms that have not yet been given a label, particularly chronic fatigue. While chronic fatigue and other physical and mental health issues and states of dis-ease are common nowadays, they are indeed not normal, yet they are more the norm than the exception. This said, I presume that we can all agree that none of us can be the best versions of ourselves when we don't feel well and are dragging ourselves through our day. So what the heck is going on? What's the deal here? Why are so many people worldwide struggling with feeling fatigued, foggy, fat, and or inflamed, or have been diagnosed with a chronic illness such as the ones this series is highlighting? Well, as has been emphasized in this series several times so far, remember, it's never just one factor that causes a person to succumb to chronic health issues. Once again, chronic dis-ease is a multifactorial, multi-systemic condition created by the perfect storm of stressful life experiences and toxic stressors of all kinds. By toxic stressors, I'm referring to factors such as inflammatory diets, trauma of all kinds, be it physical, mental, emotional, environmental, biochemical, particularly adverse childhood experiences, which would be an emotional trauma, ongoing chronic unhealthy stress levels that push the nervous system beyond its capacity, poor sleep quality, high risk lifestyle habits, such as drug and alcohol abuse, impaired digestion, gut dysbiosis, leaky gut, chronic inflammation, and environmental toxins, and the list goes on. These factors are triggers for flipping on the chronic cell danger response mode switch. So chronic CDR mode begins with the mitochondria, the energy powerhouses of our cells. Mitochondria have two primary roles. Role number one, to convert nutrients from the food we digest and assimilate into usable energy for our cells in the form of ATP. And role number two is to monitor our environments both inside and outside the body for threats. During peacetime mode, when mitochondria do not sense threats, our cells perform their jobs well. Some of their jobs include produce energy so that we can live active lives, make neurotransmitters which stabilize moods and ensure good mental health status, regulate blood sugar and hormones which help us maintain healthy weight, optimize detoxification so that our bodies get rid of more toxins than they accumulate, replenish energy stores in our brain so that we can experience peak mental performance. Initiate autophagy, which is a fancy word for cellular cleansing and regeneration, so that we can remain healthy, strong, and disease-free. And the list goes on and on. When mitochondria sense threats, however, they shift out of energy-producing and regenerative mode and into defense mode. CDR is an, is an innate protective mechanism designed to spare the body from damage, eradicate pathogens, and get rid of toxins. Dr. Robert Navio explains it as the following. The cell danger response is the evolutionary conserved metabolic response that protects cells and hosts from harm. It is triggered by encounters with chemical, physical, 
psychological and or biological threats that exceed the cellular capacity to maintain homeostasis. When the CDR persists abnormally, whole body metabolism and the gut microbiome are disturbed. The collective performance of multiple organ systems is impaired, behavior is changed, and chronic disease results. An understanding of the CDR permits us to reframe old concepts of pathogenesis for a broad array of chronic developmental, autoimmune, and degenerative disorders. Amidst CDR, the cell membrane becomes rigid, not allowing molecules in or out of the cell, and all life-giving functions slow way down or come to a grinding halt. And when this happens, the path for chronic disease to take hold is paved. This said, it's important to understand that the inflammation created by the CDR mode is the very type of inflammation that causes us to feel achy, feverish, and fatigued when we have the flu. You see, the flu bug or virus does not make us ill, but rather our cells' inflammatory response to the flu bug. In the short term, we need and want CDR mode to kick in. It's a necessary life-saving function. The problem arises in the long term, however, when this response does not shut off due to one or more of the following reasons. First, an infection or toxin remains in the body. Or, due to cellular memory, the cells of the body continue to respond as if an infection or toxin is still present even after it's been long eradicated. The cells are continuously overwhelmed by tremendous stressors that they cannot overcome, which ultimately leads to a loss of metabolic adaptation. And when any of these scenarios happen, the cells of the body can become stuck in a vicious cycle of never being able to adequately recover from stressors, which then leads to a state of low cellular energy and chronic inflammation. Chronic low cellular energy and inflammation are linked to a long list of chronic health challenges, with the most prevalent being chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, chronic Lyme and company, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, mast cell activation syndrome, and really many more. It's important for me to reiterate that with cell danger response mode, once the original danger or trigger has passed, which is often a pathogen or toxin of some kind, but not always, as I have come to learn that it can also be a physical, mental, or emotional trauma, or simply years of unsupportive lifestyle habits, unless the body's danger alarm can be turned off, the body's danger signaling system will take on a life of its own and can often persist for years or even an entire lifetime. The challenge in working with a client caught within cell danger response mode or perceived cell danger response mode based on how they are presenting comes in when determining what is truly driving the inflammatory cycle. Now remember what I said about there being three primary scenarios for how the body can get stuck within chronic cell danger response mode. In these scenarios, lab testing will most often likely reveal a high toxic burden and chronic infections, but the testing will not indicate if the toxins and or infections are the initial ones that triggered CDR in the first place, or if they are a result of persisting CDR that was triggered by stressors that have passed. So the challenges come in when determining which of the scenarios a client falls in, which can be quite tricky and, depending on the scenario, the interventions will be different. For instance, if there is an initial CDR triggering infection and or toxin that remains in the body, these must be adequately identified and removed to shut off the cell danger response switch. While I don't feel there is any way to 100% determine which of the three scenarios a client falls into, I have discovered some helpful guidelines to go by based on my personal experiences with chronic illness and in working with many, many clients now. But before turning to the guidelines, it's first necessary to consider the following carefully. The length of time that a client has been dealing with chronic health challenges, the nature of their challenges, the severity of them, lab testing and other assessments already performed and the results of them, the interventions that have already been implemented, the client's lifestyle habits, significant past physical, mental, and or emotional traumas, and the level of ongoing stress in a client's life outside of their chronic health challenges. Once you have a solid understanding of this, then the guidelines to consider are as follows. Number one, 
If the duration of the chronic health issues has been relatively short, I would say no more than one, maybe two years, and there really has not been a deep level investigation of their challenges. In other words, functional lab work that goes way beyond typical conventional labs, no deep level interventions have been implemented, the client has made some necessary lifestyle adjustments but not enough or perhaps none, none at all, and the client does not report significant past trauma outside of the health challenges themselves, then it's highly likely that initial pathogens and toxins are driving the CDR response and need to be identified and addressed properly. Some examples of this would include undiagnosed Lyme and company, stealth gut infections, stealth viral issues, mycotoxins from toxic mold exposure, and more. This is where it's most appropriate to invest the time, money, and energy into strategic, functional, and in-depth lab testing. The reason being is that it will be impossible to shut off the CDR switch until the initial triggering pathogens and toxins are appropriately and effectively eradicated. In this scenario, I feel that a highly biochemical focused approach is most often needed and therefore very appropriate. This type of client definitely exists and I have worked with them in my practice. But for me, this type of client is more the exception than the norm when it comes to chronic illness sufferers, at least in my experiences. Second, if the health challenges have persisted for a long time, over two years or up to 10, 15, 20 years, and sometimes even more than that, there has been significant lab testing done, the client has implemented many different interventions, they've made significant lifestyle adjustments, and they also report significant past trauma and ongoing high stress levels in their life outside of the health challenges themselves, then it's highly likely that the initial toxin and or infections have passed which is a primary case of cellular memory and limbic system trauma loop driven cell danger response mode. In this scenario, my go-to is no longer a highly biochemical focused approach or running more functional labs. In a case like this, which is again, more the norm than the exception for the clients that I work with in my practice, and I certainly was my one myself, I may run some labs, yes, but I feel it's more strategic to consider the labs that have already been done, maybe run one or two more if warranted, and if the results will change the approach. In a scenario like this, I feel it's better to focus time, money, and energy on using energetic testing modalities such as body code to help determine the body's most significant stressors, or as Dr. William Rawls, chronic Lyme expert and author of the book Unraveling Chronic, chronic Lyme calls them, the body's public enemy number ones, as well as the order and nature in which the body prefers to address them, in tandem with interventions designed to reboot the nervous system and reprogram the body, mind, and spirit for wellness, in my opinion, is a much more strategic and effective approach, provided the client is ready and willing and has the right mindset for it. This would be the approach I would take for both a scenario where the initial stressors have passed yet CDR remains turned on. And in the scenario where CDR has persisted for many years, there are now secondary toxins and or infections that have accumulated. In these scenarios, of course, it will still be necessary absolutely to support the biochemistry and physiology of the body with appropriate diet, supplements, and other biochemical supports. But in my experience, a biochemical only focused approach will be ineffective in helping a client to create sustainable wellness and runs the high risk of supporting cellular memory and nervous system programming for stress and illness, which will then serve to fuel cell danger response mode and around and around a person can go. This said, I feel it's important for me to share with you that I now use energetic testing modalities, such as what I mentioned before, body code, to help determine four main things, which of the three scenarios a client falls into, the client's top stressors and the order in which their body prefers to address them, the best course of action for moving forward, and ultimately to help create, implement, and fine tune healing proto protocols in terms of supplement choices, dosing, and duration. Okay, so this said, coming up in the next and final segment of this video, I will discuss some initial strategies for helping to shut off the chronic cell danger response mode switch.
When it comes to shifting the body from defense to peace mode, it's all about giving your mitochondria what they need to feel safe. And while there are many factors that must be addressed to shut off the chronic CDR mode switch, once again, for keeping this video to a reasonable length, I will only be presenting the first three. First up, as I discussed in the last video of this series, it is absolutely critical for mitochondrial health and shutting off the chronic CDR switch to make resetting the circadian clock and optimizing sleep a top priority. And a large part of this is addressing blue light toxicities at night coming from all the tech that we have come to love and depend on, as well as sunlight deficiencies during the day. Remember, sleep is the mother of all medicines and the most potent antioxidant in the body. And without enough restorative sleep, the body cannot and will not heal. Next up, regardless of what the driver of chronic CDR mode is, it is critical to support the nervous system to either ensure that it does not become wired for a persistent danger mode or to break an already developed danger mode program loop that is running deep within the subconscious mind-body system, which again, I find this scenario to be more the norm than the exception in most cases of long-standing chronic health issues, especially with a history of significant trauma. Next is to be sure to identify and remove inflammatory foods and food intolerances and to emphasize the importance of eating a whole food, no sugar and low starch diet, as well as eating organic and grass fed as often as possible. Remember, the gut represents upwards of 70% of the immune system. And if the gut is inflamed and dysbiotic as it will be in the presence of chronic cell danger response mode, the immune system will not be able to come back into a state of harmony. Furthermore, the detox pathways will be greatly compromised and the body will simply not be able to effectively excrete, excrete toxins that have accumulated as a part of everyday living. For this reason, it is essential to reduce the number of toxins coming in and I've come to believe that eating organic and grass fed as often as possible is an important part of this effort. Next, it is essential to make sure that all the other foundational pillars of health and well-being are adequately addressed and supported, such as drinking plenty of purified water, limit or completely eliminate destructive lifestyle habits, such as smoking, drugs, alcohol, etc. Ditch cookware that's full of toxic chemicals, such as Teflon, aluminum pans, and more. Get rid of toxic personal care and household products. Remember, with chronic CDR mode, it's critical to reduce ongoing toxins coming into the body. I will be going into much deeper detail into toxins and strategies for detoxing the body, oh, the body in the video on detoxification. For now, my aim is solely to provide a general framework. Next, for the foundational pillars, we have nourishing daily exercise that is at an appropriate level for the state of health of the person. Both being too sedentary and over-exercising are equally detrimental and serve as ongoing CDR triggers. Make self-care, mindfulness, and stress reduction a part of each day, even if only just five to 10 minutes. Cultivate a healthy relationship with technology and reduce electromagnetic frequency exposure. And lastly, is to, that I need to mention, is to make it a priority to spend time outside in nature each day if only just five minutes. And that's a wrap for this video. If you're interested in learning more targeted strategies and taking a deeper dive into chronic CDR mode altogether, please check out my full Wellness Code training program at wellnesscodeacademy.com. Coming up in the next segment of this series, I will be talking all things nervous system regulation as I cover tools for calming the stress response. And until next time, be well and be empowered.